The SpaceX steamroller has shifted into a higher gear this year, and SpaceX's 100 launch target is more realistic than it seems. But now Musk even declared 80% of Earth's payload to orbit by SpaceX, which shocked the whole industry. Let's discuss everything about it in today's episode of Alpha Tech. In 2022, SpaceX on average launched every six days from one of the three sites with 92% of missions completed with flight-proven first-stage rocket boosters, and Falcon 9 now holds the world record for the most launches of a single vehicle type in a single year. Most importantly, SpaceX successfully delivered our customers' payloads to orbit, deployed additional Starlink satellites that add more capacity to the network, and flew critical cargo and astronauts to the AT space station and safely return them back home to Earth. The impressive capability is possible thanks to SpaceX's ability to reuse orbital class Falcon 9 rockets. SpaceX recovers the first stage booster by performing propulsive landings on autonomous drone ships at sea. Rocket reusability enables SpaceX to launch payloads to orbit on a weekly basis. No other company in the world has that capability. According to data compiled by Bryce Tech during the second quarter of 2022, SpaceX led the global launch market, launching nearly 160,000 kilograms of up mass across 16 launches. Bryce Tech created a collection of infographics pictured below that compare the World Aerospace Company's achievements during Q2. SpaceX now delivering about twice as much payload to orbit as the rest of the world combined, said Musk in a response to the Bryce Tech infographic. Still very tiny potatoes compared to what's needed to make life multiplanetary, he wrote via Twitter. And of course, Musk likes bigger potatoes. He raised it to 80% this year. That's not counting Starship's ability when it successfully flies. Well, this ambition of Elon Musk is not unrealistic at all. Last Friday, the California-based company launched two Falcon 9s within the span of a little more than four hours. At 12.26 p.m. local time, a Falcon 9 rocket carried 52 of SpaceX's Starlink satellites into low Earth orbit from the launch pad at Vandenberg Space Force Base in California. A mere four hours and 12 minutes later, another Falcon 9 rocket delivered two large communication satellites into geostationary transfer orbit for the Luxembourg-based satellite company SES from Cape Canaveral, Florida. This broke SpaceX's record for the shortest duration between two launches. However, the overall record for the lowest time between two of the same rockets still belongs to the Russian-built Soyuz vehicle. In June of 2013, Roscosmos launched a Soyuz booster from Kazakhstan and Arian Space launched a Soyuz from French Guiana within two hours. Those launches were conducted by two separate space agencies on separate continents, however. Friday's launch of the two SES satellites was overall SpaceX's 19th orbital mission for the calendar year. As of today, the company is launching a Falcon rocket every 4.1 days and remains on pace to launch approximately 90 rockets before the end of 2023. To put this into perspective, a decade ago, the United States launched an average of 15 to 20 orbital rockets a year. In 2022, the U.S. recorded its most launches in one calendar year ever with 78 orbital flights. This year, barring a catastrophic accident with the Falcon 9 booster, that number will easily get triple digits. The all-time record for orbital launches in a single year is held by the Soviet Union with 101 in 1982. A decade ago, SpaceX was still an upstart in the global launch industry. In 2013, it launched the Falcon 9 three times in a single year for the first time. This was actually a pretty monumental achievement for the company as it introduced both its second launch pad at Vandenberg Air Force Base and a substantially upgraded variant 1.1 of the Falcon 9 rocket. It also flew commercial missions for the first time and began experimenting with ocean-based landings. In that competitive environment a decade ago, SpaceX still lagged far behind its main competitors, including Roscosmos, Europe-based Arian Space, and U.S.-based United Launch Alliance. This year, those numbers have swung massively around. Through today, Russia has launched three rockets, two Soyuz and one Proton, and that's in 2023. Arian Space has yet to launch a single mission, and neither has the ULA. Put another way, SpaceX's main competitors over the last decade have launched three rockets this year. 
SpaceX, by comparison, just launched three rockets in three days, including the CRS-27 mission that was flown for NASA that the evening of March 14th. Increasingly, only the combined efforts of China's government and its nascent commercial launch sector can challenge the SpaceX launch dominance. The nation has a total of 11 orbital launches this year. SpaceX founder Elon Musk said he would like the launch industry to achieve airline-like operations with rockets one day. His company's not there yet, as it takes a couple of weeks to land, refurbish, and relaunch a Falcon 9 first stage. Each mission still requires a brand new second stage, and the fastest turnaround time at the three launch pads, Cape Canaveral and Kennedy Space Center in Florida and Vandenberg in California, is still about a week for each facility but they have come a long, long way in a decade. After completing this, the next important step is to do the same with Starship. Gwen Shotwell, the president and COO of SpaceX noted, if we can do 100 flights of Falcon this year, I'd love to be able to do 100 flights of Starship next year. I don't think we'll do 100 flights of Starship next year, but maybe 2025, we will do 100 flights. If all goes according to plan, the Starship system would lower launch cost exponentially and usher in a new era of commercial spaceflight. Starship's promise has everything to do with its size and potential for reuse. SpaceX says the 120-meter tall spacecraft will be able to transport a payload of 100 metric tons with the greatest volume of any existing launcher. And unlike any other orbital launch system, Starship would be fully reusable, and Musk has said this could lower launch costs to about two million a pop. Walib Abdullahi, director of the Cooperative Institute for Research in Environmental Sciences at the University of Colorado Boulder says, if your launch vehicle eats up 60 million of that 350 million or more, already you're down to a pretty significant limit of resources for the actual mission. If Starship can lower that launch cost, there's more that can be directed toward the science mission itself. Depositing payloads and reclaiming others in orbit is an added perk to Starship's stated goal, which is ferrying cargo and eventually crews to the Moon and Mars. According to a recent white paper whose author list includes researchers affiliated with NASA and SpaceX, the company currently plans to launch multiple uncrewed Starship missions to Mars every two years, each time exploiting a planetary alignment particularly favorable for the voyage. Without a crew, the authors write, there's great potential to unload cargo on Mars as well as to bring back samples from the planet, and similar opportunities exist for transport to and from Earth's moon. In this regard, especially Starship's sheer size is an asset, because Starship can return tens of tons of payload from the surface of the moon. The return sample mass of lunar samples from a single mission would dwarf the combined total returned. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Do you think SpaceX can make all of these ambitions? Don't forget to share your ideas in the comment section below. Your support motivates us to create more quality video. And for that, we thank you so much and hope to see you next time.